Today, we're going on an adventure. We're taking the all-new Volkswagen ID.4 Pro S all-wheel drive electric onto the Ellensburg Overland Trail. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. This is the all-new Volkswagen ID.4 battery electric with dual motor all-wheel drive. The vehicle we have here is a mid-level Pro S trim. This comes loaded with a large panorama sunroof, upgraded 12-inch infotainment with navigation, wireless CarPlay, a touch-free tailgate, leatherette seating, and a lot more. Prices you see it here for the 2022 model, $50,605 US dollars including destination. The heart of the ID.4 is an 82 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack. It powers a pair of electric motors, one in the front and another in the back, producing a peak 295 horsepower and 229 pound-feet of torque. EPA estimates range at 240 miles. Unfortunately, Volkswagen does not include a heat pump here, so range will be more affected by cold weather than competitive models. Today we're not too worried about snow, as it's spring, the trails have cleared, and high prairie flowers are in full bloom. So today's adventure is going to be really interesting because we're doing it on all season radials. The good thing about this vehicle and the reason why we're willing to do this at all is because it has such a big sidewall. These are Bridgestone Alenza Sport ASs in a, what's the sizing, a 235-55 R19. So we got a lot of sidewall to work with there. In the back of the ID.4, there's room for up to 64.2 cubic feet of cargo space with the seats folded flat. Unfortunately, it's not quite big enough for me to lie down in. Also need to note, there is no spare tire, so we're gonna get into trouble if we get a puncture. On the underside of the ID.4 is only 6.8 inches of ground clearance, which isn't a lot. We're definitely gonna have to be careful today. So I wanna see just how this all-wheel drive system functions. So I'm gonna back up on a slick surface, put it into drive. Now, first mode I'm gonna use is comfort, and we're just gonna see how this responds to a full throttle launch. Three, two, one, go. Okay. So now on the outside, we can see how power is shifting around the system and ultimately gets us off the slippery surface. Now we're gonna back up and see how that differs with sport mode. Uh, sport, drive, and floor. Oh, traction control really kicks in there. Now we got one more mode to test here, and that is actually the traction mode, which is kind of like an off-road mode. That's there, mode, traction. Forward and throttle. Okay. So the next question is, can we turn traction control off? because traction control is definitely limiting our wheel spin. So I'll put ESC into sport mode. I'll also put drive mode into sport mode and this will be the most extreme wheel spin we can get. Let's see what this looks like. And launch it. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, there's that. <laughs> Now that we've had a little fun with that, let's head on an adventure. So on the freeway here, we can experiment with some of the cool features. Uh, we have adaptive cruise control, of course, on tap. I can go ahead and turn it on there. Hit set, travel assist is activated. Now when I go behind this car, what it'll do is it'll set the pace between me and the car in front of me. 
Now let's see how well it tracks the lanes. So I'm going to take my hands off the wheel and we're going to see how it's going to do with centering everything. It's keeping a good job. I do like how I have a little graphic up here. It shows me, oh, take over. It shows me the car in front of me. And interesting enough is that will actually change between being a car and a um, semi, depending on the vehicle in front of me, which is kind of cool. So right now I have 148 miles remaining on this battery uh, because of course we've been driving around a bunch uh, to film the car. But we're not done yet. We're actually gonna keep heading into the mountains and over the pass, which is a lot of climbing. And then we're gonna go to Ellensburg where from there we're gonna stage an adventure up the Overland Trail, which is a section of the Washington BDR. And we're gonna stop at the very peak of the trail and see if this little crossover can get there successfully. Before we do that, we do want to make sure that the battery is fully charged because I just don't know what off-road trail driving will do to an electric battery. Is it going to use a ton of charge or is it going to use hardly any charge? I don't know. Freeway driving, really smooth, nice and quiet. I have great visibility thanks to all the windows back there. It's comfortable, I like the seat. Of course, I have seat warmers available if I want them. And I even like this little gauge cluster here. I like doing the, the very specific driving information here and then using uh, the big panel for everything else. But I don't like the Tesla methodology of just using one big tablet. I think it's important to put speed and adaptive cruise information right in front of me here. It is kind of funny, the drive selector up here is that you can't read any of it because of the steering wheels in the way. But again, you, you own the car, you're gonna know forward for drive, back for reverse. I mean, it's not that hard. So I'm gonna pull off right here and we're going to navigate to the Electrify America station in Ellensburg, which is right next to the entrance of the leg of the BDR that we're gonna to do today. Right now I show that I have 128 miles after all that driving uh, left on my battery. So this will be interesting. I've never done this. Let's see, how do we find a charging station? Let's first just ask the car. Find the Electrify America charging station in Ellensburg, Washington. That's a lot of information. Please say the address. It's just giving me Ellensburg. It's not giving me charging station data. Fine, I will get my phone out and find out where the heck I'm supposed to go. I, I should not have to go to my phone, guys. Just give me a list of charging stations or something. They have a number of chargers, four CCS 350s uh, and three CCS 150. So we have plenty of options. If one of them is down, we should still be able to be successful here. So uh, let's try this. Navigate to Electrify America on 1406 Canyon Road in Ellensburg. The house number 146 is not available. Should the house... <sighs> well, this is totally useless. I, I, I gave you the address of the charging station. Why is this so hard? And it's not road east. Oh my gosh. It just doesn't even see this road as existing. It just doesn't see it at all. Fine. I will have to go with uh, phone navigation, I guess. So we are looking at a total route of 71 miles. So we have 71 miles to go. I show 128 miles available right now. Now this is cool is that um, Apple CarPlay is sending data cards up to my display up here so I can still see it in my main display. Uh, which is a nice tight integration. Okay, currently 128 miles. I have 71 miles to go. Let's see how much I have left when I roll in to the Electrify America station. One thing I am definitely curious about is we're heading uphill a lot. Right now we're at, we're probably at about 2,000, eh, maybe 1,500 feet above sea level. And pretty soon we'll be climbing up to about 3,500 3, feet above sea level. So a thousand feet, that's a pretty good climb. Uh, and that's definitely gonna have an effect on the battery, but is it gonna be so much of an effect that it's gonna cause us a problem getting all the way to Ellensburg? Uh, 
Well, that's what we're going to find out. So we just crested the pass at Snoqualmie here, and uh, miles aren't doing so great here. I have 54.4 miles remaining to Canyon Road, which is where we're going to be turning off for our charging, uh, yet I only have 86 miles remaining on my charge. That steep climb really didn't do our battery any favors. Now you will note that it is louder in here now, but this cement is exceptionally loud. I have found this ID4 to be pretty comfortable and quiet for most of the trip so far. These seats, very comfortable, still a lot of stuff to really like about this little car. And of course, you have the added confidence of all-wheel drive, uh, which will not only be you know helpful if the weather goes south, but also when the road ends. Maybe. Actually, we have yet to find that out. Fast forward to plugging in and getting this thing charged up for the next leg of the trip. It's almost time to take the exit off of I-90 here onto Canyon Road in Ellensburg. The indicator is showing me 70 miles remaining on my battery, which if you do the math based on when I left and when I arrived, that's actually turning out to be better than expected. Um, it's, so basically I have extra miles over what I assumed I was going to need, which is good. It's nice to have a little bit of padding in there. Also, initially I was going up the pass climb and that is steeper and that's obviously going to put more strain on the electric motors. But once I got over the pass, it was pretty much level or little less than level uh, smooth sailing on the way. So, you know, in the end, net result, no range anxiety, no issues. Okay, so now let's turn off. I want to take a look here, actually, before we turn off. How's battery doing? I am down to 25% of my available battery. So this should be a really good test to see how long it takes to get to 80% because we're only going to charge up to 80% before we head out. Huh, so this literally is in a Taco Bell parking lot. Now the good thing is, is that you don't have to eat Taco Bell. There's an Arby's, uh, there's McDonald's, there's a Starbucks right over there. So we got lots of options in walking distance, which is good because we need to charge this for at least 30 minutes. So let's go see how this system works. Now this is a 350 kilowatt charger. Is that gonna click? Okay. Now it's interesting to note that this is a 2021 ID4, so it only charges at a peak uh, 125. The 2022 models will charge at a peak 135. Neither are nearly as fast though as the Hyundai Ionic 5, which is disappointing. But we'll, we'll use what we got here. Uh, let's see, so all I have to do is take this card, tap it, it went ding. Processing payment. Well, that was easy. So at this point, I can monitor the charging activity uh, either with the Electrify America app or I can use the Volkswagen app. Now, I haven't loaded the Volkswagen app because we just test too many cars. I just don't bother. Uh, but right now it shows that the Electrify America charger is getting a report from my car that it's at 24% total charge. And then this will actually keep me up to date while we're out and about getting some snacks. So when we're done, when it's done, we know when to come back. So we plugged in, went, I got some coffee for myself, and we're at 87% charged already. This has so far taken 40 minutes and it's cost me a little bit more than 20 bucks. We're gonna wrap up this charge, but as you can see, we've been charging currently at 38 kilowatts. I never saw that get above 89. Uh, we paid 20 bucks, 42 minutes. Uh, if we wanted to hang around for an extra 15 minutes, we'd get all the way to 100, but I don't think that's really necessary and we've delivered uh, 48 kilowatt hours. So let's go ahead and hit stop. Stop charging, yes. Great, we'll unplug and head on out. Let's buckle up. Um, and I do show that we have 89% here on the battery, which should give me, yep, 196 miles of range. Plenty for the rest of this adventure. At least I hope so. Away we go. This is going to be kind of exciting. Now, 
This vehicle is clearly not designed for off-roading, but this is a pretty easy trail. There's just a couple tricky spots. The biggest issue is gonna be the 6.8 inches of ground clearance, which is not a lot, but I'm thinking that it's doable. I'm just gonna to have to be extra cautious about rocks along the way. I'm not too concerned about the charge. I think 193 miles is more than plenty. Uh, since we're only going about 20 miles into, um, into the trail, but we have to get back out again, and I just do not know what the effects of climbing on a trail are with electric powertrains. This is new to me. Of course, there is no underbody protection on this vehicle. It's also rolling on all season radials. So of course, caution, 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 caution. That is the word of the day. I'm gonna be super cautious about every little thing that I do. Time to turn onto the dirt road and start the adventure. No idea this is going to be a good idea. Okay, first impressions. Not bad. The suspension is appropriately smooth. Traction control is definitely kicking in a lot. Now there is a special off-road traction mode on this vehicle. Let's see if we go to mode. It's called traction mode. It's interesting they didn't call it trail, probably because they don't really want people taking this onto trails, but uh, we'll see how it does anyway. See if we can kick this around a little bit. Woo! <laughs> That's not bad. Try to chuck it in. Oh, just a little bit. Didn't really allow for ultimate chucking. Just slight chucking. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> this is kind of fun. It doesn't really let you get too far crossed up, so you're never really going to get into too much trouble here. So we have uh, 178 miles so far. Oh, there should be a trip here I can do. I mean, I just like, where's my tripometer? Where's all my normal stuff? Status? Tire pressure service. Okay, that has 5,000 miles. Can I reset that? since charge. Oh, well, I've done it eight miles since I charged last. So maybe that's the number I need to go off. Fine. So we only have two miles, almost three miles up to the towers. We have 178 miles right now on the battery. We should be fine. I would like it though to have enough power left over when we get back to Ellensburg to make it all the way back to Bellevue without having to charge again. That would be nice. Not sure we're gonna get that though. Man, it's so quiet. I do like this whole very quiet electric motoring thing. Just these little ledges I'm really worried about. Okay, there we go, we got that. This might've been a really bad idea. Now, my theory here is if I go slow enough, punctures will be highly unlikely. Um, although, you know, these things have no extra reinforcement. Even their tread blocks are pretty shallow. This is where things start to get interesting. I'm driving down what uh, at one time was a toll road for easy access between Ellensburg and the valley over there near Sela. Nowadays it's just a trail and barely a trail at that. Now I have to look out for rogue rocks of course because I don't want to high center and I definitely don't want to puncture my sidewalls. So I'm just rolling real slow, doing about seven miles per hour. But then I have the unfortunate possibility of a puncture from one rock, one bad rock, and that would end my day. So let's just be really careful. Also, the crowning in the road is quite extreme. You can't really see it on camera, but it's quite possible that even without a rock in the way, that, that center crown is definitely a couple inches higher in spots risks increases the opportunity 
for danger. It says my whole course here is 3.4 miles. Still at 179. Oh, I'm going down a hill now. I could put on B. So B changes it to be more extreme regenerative braking, which is really good for keeping your battery charged. It's going to be way more aggressive on um, engaging those regen systems on the brakes. And I'm basically just gliding downhill, so let's use it, right? I also don't want to scratch these wheels. These are 19 inch wheels and normally might not do something like this on 19s, but they do have a significant amount of sidewall, which I was really impressed by. I'm not sure the word is impressed or just surprised. Usually when you go up to 19s, they give you a little, little tiny amount of rubber, which uh, is not good. Not good for your ride quality, uh, not good for resisting punctures, but it does look good. So there's that. Today, Nick is chasing me in his Lexus GX. I know he would be doing probably about 35 to 40 on this same road, which I'm now crawling along at eight. It's an adventure still, right? I put the window down, a little quiet motoring. It's actually kind of nice. Oh, and you know what I just noticed? We actually gained several miles on that downhill section just through regenerative braking. I now have 182 miles of range, so that's nice. But I can't relax too much because we actually have a challenge coming up right up here. You know, in certain vehicles, this is not concerning at all, but I have to say in this vehicle, this whole trek is very concerning. I have doubts. <laughs> huge doubts. Uh, I'm starting to question my choices here. Already it's trying to shift power around to find grip. I'm just keeping it in, uh, I'm, well, it's in comfort mode, I guess. Watch those parking sonars. It's gonna be a long day. <laughs> you have the benefit of just watching and seeing us really compact this whole section, but man, I gotta, I gotta drive this thing for miles. <sighs> okay, finally, the cross cut, and it looks deep today. Actually, it looks deeper than usual. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set the vehicle up into traction mode, which looks like it's for mountains, kind of. It's not a trail mode, but we'll see if this actually will shift power left to right. Uh, because even though there's an electric motor in the front, electric motor in the back, they do have open differentials, uh, shift pushing power to both sides. So if one side has no grip, it'll just spin and all of that torque just escapes through that axle. So what this uses is a brake vectoring system to clamp down on the brake to prevent that wheel from spinning, which then pushes power back into the other axle. And it does so independently front to back. So let's give this a try. Now, I don't have a front camera here, so I can't really see where my approach is. Let's go left. Okay, now, I'm gonna dig into the, there's a hole right here, which means this wheel and that wheel are gonna have grip, but these two wheels are gonna lose traction. And I just wanna kind of hang out here and not use momentum and see if the vehicle can get up it. So I'm just keeping the throttle on. And we're gonna see what this does. Oh, shifting power. I'm feeling it trying to. Oh! Ah! Ah! Would you look at that? That worked great. I mean, it was a little shifty and it's a process, but it actually worked. Nice. I'm feeling a little bit better now. Still going to go slow though. Punctures are still a real problem. So driving on a road like this, even at five miles per hour, is pretty interesting. It is the off-road version of that old uh, race track axiom, driving a slow car fast is more fun than a fast car slow. Well, same thing here. This is way more interesting in this car than it is driving it in, in the Lexus that is our chase car today. And the reason for that is simply because, I mean, he could do this at 30 miles an hour and his 
truck doesn't care. It'll be just fine. This one, I have to worry about every single little rock. <laughs> uh, even the slightest amount of grade in front of me might bump my nose. I mean, there's a lot of concerns I have here. And the adventure continues. Shows we only have two miles to go. Uh, we do have 170 miles remaining on the battery, which is great. Um, obviously, we regain stuff as we go down steep hills. Uh, we spend a lot more as we're going up hills. Not really sure if it comes out in the wash. Probably doesn't. Um, but, you know, it's it definitely... Um, yeah, yeah, I, I get a good feeling this is not going to be a problem at all. And in fact, the suspension setup is good. The power transfer is actually really good because I was expecting nothing. <laughs> but I got actual power transfer on that one crosscut test. So I'm feeling much better about it right now. Still got to watch for ditches. As I've clearly been spending a lot of time in this vehicle today, there's a few things that kind of bug me. The fact that every single time I get out of the vehicle, it shuts its power off. It's like sometimes I just want to keep power going in a car. I'm sure there's a way to do it, but the default is it just shuts everything off instantly as soon as I get out and powers it back up when I come in. Uh, sometimes I just want to get out and in and not have the vehicle fuss over me quite so much. Also, really don't like the lack of proper buttons and switches. It just, it becomes annoying after a while. And I know that's just something that we've said constantly, but it's true, you know? Give me a volume knob. Give me uh, aircon physical buttons. I feel like everything just takes a little bit more concentration than it should trying to deal with these virtual switches. So like, I want to turn the fan on now because I'm getting hot. And now I got to be like, what? Oh, hit climb it. Wait for climate to come up. Turn up the fan a little. Uh, oh wait, that's that? Okay, that's what I want. There we go. See, that was a lot more concentration than just boop. I would much rather just boop. Okay, we're gonna have a little bit of power shifting need here because it's gonna, it's a bit of a rise on the right. Come on, power shift. Oh yeah, smooth. So if you are taking your family up here and you do it on a regular basis, this probably isn't the best choice. That said, if you did throw a pair of, say, like, you know, Vredestein Pinzas or Falcon Wild Peaks, I don't know if they make any of those in the size of wheel, but if they do, then you are mitigating a, one of the biggest potential issues here, and that is a puncture. Uh, but so far, in terms of ground clearance, it's been fine. Okay, just went over a rock, want to make sure that was fine. It was. <laughs> and look at this. This is spectacular. And with the electric motoring, it just makes you feel like you're a little bit closer to nature. Yeah, I can hear that under 20 mile per hour little angelic fake sound, but uh, it's not too bad. Growing up in the 1970s, I constantly heard stories about people having just great adventures in Volkswagen Bugs. So you might not think of the Bug as being a terribly capable machine, but the fact is, is that it was really small, really light, rear wheel drive, and a perfectly flat underside. That meant that it was just really capable for what it was. And as the years, you know, went beyond the Bug's heyday, we started to see a lot of like, monster off-road conversions and just all these different types of re-envisionings of the Volkswagen Bug. And so with this, the ID4, Volkswagen yet again is going after that whole kind of people's car concept. And a people's car really has to be a vehicle that's capable of doing everything, taking you everywhere. Now granted, like the Volkswagen Bug, this one isn't really designed for stuff like this. However, it kind of has all the pieces necessary to do this, not just comfortably, but pretty safely as well. And if you're on green power, it's better for the environment to boot. So, I mean, did has Volkswagen really created the next generation people's car? I think they have. Now, the difference today, of course, is the fact that there's a lot more cars being made. The Volkswagen Bug was very unique in its space. This car, it's not quite as unique because there are quite a few electric cars that have all wheel drive. Um, in fact, I would say the closest competitor to this one would be the new Toyota BZ4X and its cousin, the Subaru Solterra. 
because they actually have more ground clearance. They have more off-road capability, yet they're also really great for around town. But I have to say, overall, very impressed with this ID4. It has done this whole adventure much better than I expected. Uh, it's been comfortable, it's been quiet. I still have 158 miles left on this battery, and I can tell you this much that it will regenerate a whole lot of that back as we go back down because we've been mostly climbing this whole way. Any grinding? Nope, we're still good. So you can look at the Volkswagen ID4 here and say, well, it doesn't do this, it doesn't do that. But the fact is, is that if you just need a car that gets you where you need to go and it does so in a competent, calm and somewhat luxurious way, the ID4 actually really delivers. It's the people's car for what people need today. Now, does everybody need to drive up an overland trail? No. Can this do it? Well, clearly it can because we just did. Okay, here we are. Time for the final climb. Let's do it. Oh, looks like we got a splash zone. Let's put the window up. <laughs> and let's go to the right. Ooh, this is a very rocky climb here. Yeah, this is actually the hardest section uh, that we've encountered so far. Very rocky, very steep. ID4 doing just fine. So the really cool thing about all-wheel drive electric cars, most of them use two dedicated motors. And that means that you're not really like, you know, doing all your power up front with just a little bit in the back. No, it's actually pretty balanced because uh, they're putting very beefy motors back there. And that is important for, especially when you're on an incline, all the weight is to the back. So you have to be able to like push the vehicle up the incline. And this one is doing great. I think we're gonna have a clear view on the top of the hill today. Last time we were up here, it was uh, foggy. Couldn't see a thing. This has just been spectacular. There's Mount Rainier in the distance. Over there, I think that's Mount Adams. Um, over to that way is the Stewart Range. It's kind of a good reminder why it's so amazing here in the Pacific Northwest. You wouldn't know that we're like, an hour and a half away from Seattle right now. And uh, yeah, we officially have made it to the top. Pretty impressed, nicely done Volkswagen. Let's check out that view. As you can tell, we made it. The little ID4 did just fine. So we got a few things to talk about though. First off, the good. The all wheel drive system did a fantastic job of putting power down where we needed it and we got to the top safely. The bad, that power on and off every single time I get out of the vehicle, it's just annoying. Um, sometimes you wanna leave your car on. You can't do that with this one, or at least I can't figure out how to do it. And finally, the ugly. Yeah, it kind of is. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share videos with your friends. We make them for you, and I hope you enjoy them. And now I just need to drive down the hill.